time it's zero we're live okay just a my... second hey yeah, google no go in airplane mode <laughs> go to airplane according mode. to apple support Shut... <laughs> hey google <laughs> go to airplane mode turning on airplane mode okay it's yeah. a new phone i'm just learning how to get the dials and talk to her <laughs> mine, mine are always yeah. wanting to talk to me, but I don't ever talk to them. Like, I'm not talking to you. I'm not going to talk to you. So we're just making small talk here right now. Yeah, right. Uh, that's I didn't mean yeah. small talk. That's 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 not really cool for me. I do so. voice <laughs> dictation, so I talk to my computers a lot, and they talk back. Oh, well, they you know record what? things sometimes. Or Oh, you do. Oh, you you do that work. Converse it to to text. Text. Or what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, that I need to look really into well. that. So, somebody uh, hit me up the other day. Let me see what am I trying to do here. Hang on, one second. Let me see. Oh. Wait one second. Okay, I can turn turn this. Uh, okay, we're good. Can you hear me? I do. Okay, one more second. Let me just get a, a feel for what's happening here. No, I, I, I know I know that I need to uh, use that audio thing. And also, a lady hit me up the other day. She's like, "Can you convert these to Spanish?" Mm. I'm like, you know, that's, that's there's an app for that. There's actually a program I have that does translation and captionization. Uh, I have to get with you on that. <laughs> I have to get with you on that because uh, yeah, I really need to look into that and maybe. Okay, we got 17 people in it the house. Languages. Hello. I don't have. Uh, oh, Eleanor Young from San Diego. Mm. Right. Hello. Levine Kassar, Kelly Beard, Katrina Christie Duck, uh, Katrina. Patricia Satchwell, Mary, Mary Kathleen McCormick. I can't even see this morning. Anna mm -hmm. Edina from Germany and uh, a few other people. I can't see everybody. So yeah, we're gonna have Hello, a great everybody. show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just I just lost the what I needed. <laughs> so that wasn't very smart. Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm only like one and a quarter coffee cups down. Right. <laughs> About fifteen more seconds. If these shows resonate with you, please share. We have been getting suppressed by set Facebook again. We're not quite ready to make our break, Why? but it's coming very soon. And if you if you just share one or two times, it seems to keep us above the algorithms, and it's actually been going pretty good. So thank you for that. Thank you for the continued love, support, contributions that allow us to keep doing what we're doing. So we're here at Soul Speaks 5D, Sold You One Network this morning. We have a beautiful divine goddess with a very special uh, role in this ascension. And uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be a really interesting show. I can feel it already. So mm -hmm. without further ado, let me uh, formally... Uh, introduce you to our beloved sister. Uh, Mayor mm. Simone is Dakini, an anistress of sacred pleasures and sexual healing coach, certified tantra educator and sex surrogate partner, erotic explorer. I almost choked. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a <lot. laughs> take a pause, take a breath, <laughs> breathe, breathe. Yeah, <laughs> lover of all things luscious in life. Yes. Yeah, Her deep true. search for sexual illumination and fascination in the profound healing powers of touch has led Mary to explore every chakra mm. as a conscious awakening erogenous zone. Uh, she will share her journeys as well as her best tips on how to live a most luscious life based in L.A. and towards the worldwide Thailand in 2020. So welcome. Thank you for honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us today. Mm, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Naveen Kazar says, hold on to your seat, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yes. I mean, wow, this is such a, a, a timely and cool and, and vital subject because vital. You know, this whole thing about this this trip, this unconscious trip we were on and all the sexual suppression and oppression mm. and molestation and violation and, and, and misuse and, mm. and just distorted mm -hmm. bullshit. <laughs> Excuse yeah. my French, it's early. But very distorted. So I'm with you. Yeah. The, the other side of it is, which is what this which is what you're you know, is is that's where our real power is. That's where our real power is. And, 
you know, I know I've documented my journey with Morgan and I had to go through this, this whole phase of the masculine being demasculated and castrated and, and, mm -hmm. and then wondering what was I going to do now? How do I start? Where, where do I begin and start this, this, uh, uh, journey of sacred sexual remembering, sacred sexual knowledge remembering. Mm -hmm. And so it's, yeah. it's a totally different thing than anything I ever experienced in all my years. Uh, it, it's mind blowing. I feel like a little boy, like like mm -hmm. a kid in a candy store, mm -hmm. and the universe is showing me things through through that vibration and through the divine feminine that have been mind blowing, including <laughs> light language appearing on her body including um, off-planet sacred geometry, including mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. morphing, uh, visions, uh, direct intel. So so I'm really excited because the thing I love about your bio is that you don't, I can just tell from your energy, you don't, you don't do anything but embrace the, the deepest pleasure and feeling. And I'm not speaking... <laughs> from a 3D sense, but you absolutely embrace the sanctity of the sacred sexual vibration. So, mm, so I'm, truly. I'm excited. I don't, yeah. I don't even know where it started. <laughs> I mean, or how did you get into it? I don't know, whatever you want to talk about. This one, you've got me stumped. Uh, well, I'll start with the bio. I wrote it last night as I was thinking, what is it that I really want your listeners to know about me and about what as I'm here to share what I feel at this time, I really am feeling called to share strongly. And that is exactly what you spoke of, this evolution and graduation from shadowy sexuality to conscious sexuality. And the breakthroughs occur in the intimacy and communication and honesty and the vulnerability and the healing and the you know, debris, you know, removing the debris of our psychic static past. Yeah. That had that, that, in my opinion, mm -hmm. as I reflect on my journey, which has been, it seems like forever, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I never saw Morgan in the physical until, until summer of 2017. So what's that like, like uh, a year and a half going on two years and, mm -hmm. uh, whoa, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like you just start all over, but I know because my body physically, uh, healed itself through this mm -hmm. process. Yay. And that that impact that you're talking about, that energetic impact, yes. had direct, and, and I can only speak for myself, but direct manifestation mm -hmm. within my body to include blockages of a yeah. physical matter, to include mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff. But it's mm -hmm. but it's healing, and the and the great thing about it is what little I know about it because I don't I'm not going to say that I do about sacred sex is that. You don't even have to have a conscious intention of what you're trying to heal or anything. The, the the energy of the experience itself is healing every cell in your body. Mm, and has wisdom to where it needs to go to yes. to to yeah. heal. And, and it's like orgasmic energy is the power that created us. And without this dirty taboo around it, it's a power that also rejuvenates us when we visit it. Every time we give ourselves or another an orgasm, we're tapping into our life force. We're activating our realignment with source. Yeah. And, and that's a way of turning on that sparks our day, that juices our life and our purpose and gives us the, you know, the, the sense of magic and elation in our life, you know, because we're turned on. <laughs> we're activated. Sexy. It mm -hmm. keeps it sexy. Yeah, yeah, is. for sure. Very juicy and sexy yeah, and alive. I mean, you know, We're living from a turn on place rather than ashamed and afraid and yeah. me too. And oh my God, what do we do now? How do we communicate? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the thing is the old way to communicate was a certain way. Like the man would yeah. say, hey, 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 you know, and I, and, then, <laughs> and it, was that whole, <laughs> it was that whole game. And, you know, I, it's very my different. Journey, and I'm just conveying this just to try to help people, but I literally mm. lost my balls. I lost, everything went away. I didn't know what to do anymore. I had to start by just holding a hand and kissing with closed lips. I mean, it was, it, we went back to that basics, but 
you know, the thing is, is there's a natural knowing that we have as we navigate this incredible, you know, this incredible uh, space, this intimate space with someone that you just know. And, and, and that's what's happening. All this crap has has fallen off and been shedded. Mm-hmm. And it's opening up a whole new world. And I'm just like a kid in a candy store now. I just <laughs> can't wait till she gets back over here. Yeah, brand new. <laughs> wow, wow. That is so exciting for me to hear how juiced up you are and your connection and your, your love for each other. Because here's the thing, I think men and women are very different and at various times throughout culture and you know the ages we've had different kinds of dynamic and relationships with each other and as you were saying you know there was a way that men used to approach women that's now not as cool not as not not as cool not as conscious so the dynamic and difference between men and women is that we want that conscious heart and soul connection to really make our bodies fully engaged in giving and surrendering and completely com- you know, uniting in communion with each other. Yeah. That makes sex really sexy. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and so, you know, when the heart and soul and the mind are connected, and that's what we women crave, men can go so much deeper, right? And have okay. such a richer experience yeah, yeah. with a partner. Yeah, and you know, it's, it, and it's, uh, yeah, and it's almost like two, Mm. The, the 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 because it's it's about it's about vulnerability i mean for like he he can't he has to bring that game you're talking about i mean game in a bad way i mean it just in a street you know vernacular but he he <laughs> he has to bring that she can't do it by herself right and so like he has to give it all up man i mean like you know whether he's soft or hard whether he's fluid mm. confident uh, nervous, whatever it is, he's got to bring it to the table. And I'm telling you, it expands, it expands <laughs> deliberately and steadily. And, and the repercussions of it are uh, mind blowing on the physical body. And I'm just talking about, yeah. I'm not even talking, I'm just it talking is. about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, talking about it and reflecting on it, not necessarily being intimate or in, in any type of intimacy with her, just what I've watched happen to my body. And it's got to be something that mm. men are going through. It has to be. We each have to give it up and meet in the middle where we gain and learn and grow from being vulnerable and being seen. And and vulnerable is sexy because it's so authentic. And when you can be loved at that most vulnerable part of you, there is nothing holding you back from total love, total connection, total surrender as a woman. That's really juicy. <laughs> That's really sexy. Yeah, you know what I call it? I call it the most. It, it, it's it's mm. the most sexless sex. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not genital sex. At that point, it becomes heart sex. sex or soul yeah, sex or brain yeah. sex. Yeah, you can connect and commune and have orgasmic yeah. explosions on many different yeah. chakras. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you know what I think too is that pure, mm-hmm. that pure love. If it's a pure love intention or a pure love yeah. feeling, you can't really like fake that. Oh, I, I'm, I, if I kind of love this person or not. But I remember mm-hmm. the first time we got together and we maintained celibacy. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean we did not have intercourse for till after we were married, like a couple of weeks after we were married. So this went on for quite some while. Up, I would say you know maybe fifteen to twenty weeks. But the first time we laid down together, yeah. I put my hand on her back and I didn't even know what I was doing. I just, it just felt right. I put my hand on the, in like between her, her uh, shoulder blades mm-hmm. and, and she started having soul gasms through the chakras. Right? <laughs> so I was like, whoa. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It all starts with our mind connecting with what this is. If we feel this is love coming to us, we can feel it as this beautiful pleasure, that, that exquisite, <sighs> what you were just describing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that feeling. It's all in our hearts and our souls. And so, you know, really the cosmic union starts with communication. 
that allows the body and the soul to connect. You give it context. You you express your love through your touch. Yeah. And it's it's really felt or it touches the places that are blocking it because we don't feel worthy of love. So those get healed in the vulnerable spaces of expressing your fear and shame and you know things that That's hold us really back right. so that love can enter those zones too. Yeah. And then it's like we're That's making love to the inner territories of our consciousness with one another, entering and embracing. You know, it. That's mm. a great point you're making. And, I, and I'm really glad you pulled in. It takes both, right? Mm. Because mm -hmm. what I'm noticing, I'm not saying this so much because I think as an individual goes, so goes a collective. But I'm not saying this so much mm -hmm. about Morgan. But we're healing each other in a way. I guess you could put it in that way. And the thing about the, the sacred intimacy, which can be mm -hmm. anything from like holding hands to, you know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is it is like the epitome of the divine conscious union because it's in the physicality at the deepest level mm -hmm. of being honest and mm -hmm. vulnerable. Yeah. And even if you say whatever you want to say to the other person, you can't mm -hmm. bullshit yourself because you are like in the purest state. And so the, the opportunity for elevation is huge, but by the same yes. token, proportionate to the size of the elevation, the fears are huge, but you mm -hmm. have someone to go. With. Yeah. Yeah. And this, the love on the other side, the fear is so delicious and worthy that you're willing to make that leap <laughs> because love yeah. is on the other side. Yeah. yeah, but it's uh, and it's worth it, you know. <laughs> I feel like it's this is a difficult uh, subject to discuss, isn't it? <laughs> I think you're doing really good. You're being so vulnerable and truthful that I just feel like you're opening your soul to us, and that's that's like, you know, we're making love to you know we're seeing the love in your heart. It, mm. It's like a cosmic communion when we don't have fear, we can be vulnerable even with your audience and your friends. True. You're having yeah, a deep, intimate fun. connection that allows you to deeply know and feel each other. Because yeah. union, to me, we can commune on so many levels. When we have a deep conversation, we're having an oral connection <laughs> or a conscious connection that allows and engages our brain chakras and our heart chakras. And and when we engage them, it's it's almost like we're having a deep, the deeper and more honest we are, the more communion, you know, it's, it's a different kind of intimacy, but it's a, it's another deep connection. And when all of the chakras are connected, then the sexual chakras are so much more rich because there's no block. No, man. What, I don't know what's happening. I can't, I can't talk about it. <laughs> well let's let's talk uh, about seven chakra <laughs> awakening because What's because that? here's the thing we've all been brought up for decades for eons <laughs> maybe not eons but for for many civilizations we've been brought up with this shadowy fear that prevents us from really being sexually enlightened we we you know we play in the dirty realms and we get naughty and we do things that act out our shame and our guilt and our fear and we you know have our kinks and our fantasies and all that to try and break out of the dull reality that we were given that was just so limited about the power between our thighs and yeah. between every chakra but starting in i mean there's a that's the power of creation if we were brought up with this information from the time you were little that you have a magic wand between your thighs and it will teach you and it will guide you and enlighten you and thrill you and delight your partner too. It's a magic yeah. wand. <laughs> How would your life be different? How dynamic in your, you know, your freedom be different? If we all had that reality from the time we were little, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that's the highest realm of, but now we're awakening to that layer by layer. We're releasing the sh you know the shields and shedding yeah. the shame, layer by layer, and becoming clearer and clearer about the power of our sexuality. So let's talk about it from that standpoint. Whether yeah. you're alone as an individual or a partner or a triad or a quad, whatever 
sexual dynamics you enjoy, we create a connection to source when we're turned on. And if we allow ourselves to feel our own divinity, we can make love to the God or goddess within ourselves and within each other and have it be a deep, rich, soulful experience that illuminates us with cosmic orgasms. Not just genital orgasms, but a cosmic orgasm rises up through the body and nourishes you. It revitalizes you. It's like a tonic that we should have in our daily, <laughs> or, you know, it's like elixir. free, uh, uh, exactly like that. It's a free, it's an elixir that we can tap into. And it makes us shine and illuminate and, and be more brilliant in our brain and more creative in our thoughts and things that we were never taught. Yeah. But it, it even helps to prevent heart attacks and other diseases and rejuvenates every cell and every organ in our body because you know what? It created every organ in every cell. Yeah. Orgasmic energy is more profound, is more powerful than stem cells because it created the stem cells is what Master Chia says. And I believe that when that we're into sense. that. Makes hmm. sense. Yes. So if we knew, and now that we know, <laughs> we can yeah, remove right. the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and really align ourselves with being the high priest of pleasure and the high priestess yeah. of, of love that we can radiate this energy because the planet so needs it. It's so dark and so yeah. <sighs> disconnected. But at least it's coming up. Everything is coming up, so it can be healed. Yeah, you know, all not, the rage you know, and the shame and the blame. Yes. Well, yeah, not just that, but you know, like if I look back at my situation and talk to a few brothers here and there, mm -hmm. you know, it's like everything we knew was wrong. I mean, every single thing we knew was wrong. And not wrong. Not well, wrong. Was it? Just very I mean, one-sided. Program. We not, were. Not, yeah. It's like <laughs> very masculine it's not wrong it's just how you are in your extreme well, masculine this is what happened <laughs> to me okay mm -hmm. i gotta tell everybody this because i think this is what activates people you just gotta be honest about it right sure, go ahead. so she came three times we got married the second time uh the third time she came here in hawaii and uh and uh she left about what three three weeks ago so mm -hmm. what happened was through this journey of 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 um deliberate i wouldn't say slow but maybe slow and steady progress together uh i was going through like you know i used to be an animal man i mean like my warrior would come out and <laughs> now i'm standing here you know and i'm just like what the hell am i what's going on here it's like the chatter in my head you know slowly 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 faded away and i thought um. to myself how do I find that power? Why, where is that power that I had that I know was pure, even though it was a little distorted and it may be, you know, a, a little, you know, but too, too overly false masculine or whatever. And the crazy thing is, is that mm -hmm. it, it all changed a couple nights before she left and, and things got really heated. And I've told this story. I'm not going to go into the details, but, but everything changed. Like I was just like shut down right in the middle of it. And I started seeing that light language and the sacred geometry and these visions and stuff, right? Well, oh, yeah. two days later, I dropped her off in Honolulu at 6.30 in the morning at the airport. And be between the time I got in the Uber and got back to the hotel, you would have thought that all of my teenage hormones had just been re-entered into my body or reopened up. And for the next two days, I don't know what the hell was going on. I, I don't know what was happening. You know, but I will say this, the message I was getting was almost like an initiation. Mm, like you, yes. Your channel's clear. And, and it really has remained that way and with, wow. with a few elevations in the three weeks since she's been gone. So I'm real excited to see her when she gets back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to be talking to you. This is so alive and juicy. So what have you learned so much so, so far in this igniting stage? What have I learned? Uh, yeah, well, you, know, you were describing about a cosmic, uh, what did you call it? A cosmic orgasm? Yeah. What you were cosmic talking? I, I understand what you were saying earlier, not as to, to be explained to me or to try to explain, 
But that feeling that you're talking about, it happened to me last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. I talked to her on the, on the, on the uh, camera for like the first time in a few days. And we just had a conversation, right? And, you mm -hmm. know, of course, I mean, I, 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 I'm in love. I mean, I, you know, she's, and I just was like looking at her, you know, and she's got like on this daggy paint dress and, you know, you can't see any skin or anything, but I'm looking at her like, oh my God, I want to jump your bones, you know, but not like 3D. Okay. So when I got off the phone, I was like, I went outside and I'm looking over the balcony into the jungle out here and that wind's going and the trees are going and the birds are going, woo, 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 you know, and everything's like, you know, <laughs> and I could feel in the middle of my back, yeah. this energy start to form in my solar chakra. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I thought, okay, what is this? Is she visiting me? Because I could feel, I could, it's like, I could feel her, but, and I thought, well, is this me? And then I thought, well, it's all the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. then it started to go down my chakras into my lower chakras and then started to kind of go back and forth. And I'm, I just, <laughs> I, was, I was just like, okay, well, that's what it is, right? That's part yeah. of what it is, right? That is so beautiful. I felt you as you exp ex expressed that. It was so rich and beautiful to, I think you're feeling your chakras are opening, your heart chakra is feeling filled with light and, the, the yeah. blockages are clear, you're opening and, and it's flowing down into your groin and turning you on, right? Yeah. <laughs> and giving your body orgasms. Oh, yeah. yeah, and, and the thing you can that happens, tune that energy and channel it and play with yeah. it. And yeah, yeah, and it's rejuvenating. It's kind it's of, yeah, it's kind of what I was doing last night. And, and right. uh, but uh, especially the with is, this full moon, super moon, that was part of it. Sacred, too, deep, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, you know it, I've lived. In this journey, I've literally seen in my mind's eye and in the communication with my body, literally seen my physical body, my biology. And even last night, I was being shown. This is how it used to be. This mm. is what's happening now. And it was literally showing like a really, really clogged area. And yeah. it and it showed me how it was cleansed and, and regenerated. Beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. Ah, I, I feel so blessed to talk with you in this phase of your journey. That's so fantastic. Yeah, yeah this, this orgasmic energy, kundalini, we sometimes refer to it as too. It's the life force that moves from one chakra to another, and it sits uh, in our sacral center, our sexual chakra center. Serpentine-like is a symbolic you know, image of it, this, this spiral of energy. And as we communicate and express and become whole and complete and connect in love you're opening up your other chakras and allowing this kundalini energy this love force to rise up through you and and it blesses you and it gives you gifts and wonderful things yeah and it can rise all the way into your brain and illuminate you and fill you up yeah when you feel those feelings know it's a blessing and yeah you hold good. on for the ride <laughs> I felt last night. I was just you yeah. know, taking some time to myself, drinking half a beer, and just chilling out and about to go to bed. And uh, that's and, and you know the other thing I get from it too is, and and this is really not speaking in couples. This is speaking to me, my own perspective as an individual, healing and going through this process is that, you know, we've all been in the act. We've all felt the sexual energy. That's what physical slash non physical, physical. And then there's the uh, the invisible, the kundalini, right? But you've got the physical too. And physical and spiritual, let's say. Physical and spiritual. And yeah. so it has to be, it not has to be. It seems to me if everything's an integration of polarities here, those two come together in balance. And the thing about the spiritual one, the non-physical, the kundalini one, is that it only operates on one thing, truth. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's got to be true. The more true it is, the more pure it is, the more soulgasmic it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> it's just new territory for me. You know, mm. I mean, I, I think most people, that's new territory. To me, this is, let me ask you this. I haven't even asked you a question yet. <laughs> this, oh, this is cool. But, but uh, to me, this, what we're talking about, is way above tantra way above tantra way above anything i've ever seen what's your opinion it's sacred sexuality 
And Tantra is one version of sacred sexuality. And within Tantra, there are many, many different lineages and variations and versions. So I would just simply state without the labels of Tantra, it's, it's pure sexuality. It's, high, it's understanding and embracing sexuality here and now as a whole human being. Yeah. And you can call it whatever label you want based on whatever you're comfortable framing it as. Um, I think that some people were more enlightened in Tantra and mothers are more traditionalist to follow more rigid kinds of paths. And mm -hmm. I try to be more the, the you know, fluid kind of intuitive one, even though I've studied various schools. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what I've learned from all my practices is that the essence is in my being. And like you say, in that place of ultimate truth, of just total openness yeah. and vulnerability and willingness to be exactly as you are. And then every you know, channel is wide open to feel and receive and, and be blasted with <laughs> this beautiful yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, it's... It's a beautiful thing. So we so, don't have to pretend or try to do the right moves or positions or gestures. It's just be in yeah. truth, be in love, be totally exactly. open, exactly. which is not always easy to do. And that's where work or sometimes coaches or healers can come in helpfully to, to guide and support. That's very true. And that's what I was talking about, that you, you, it would seem that you, the balance, the more balanced it was, the more pure you know, and genuine, uh, the more orgasmic it is. And it isn't, it isn't easy because it's new territory for us. So what would someone like you, the type of practitioner you are, what would you, what do you do? What, I mean, how do you explain that to people or train them or whatever? Well, this light force, this energy of orgasmic energy is kind of like a, a purifying force that, brings up everything that blocks it. Kundalini is this you know, cleansing cyclone of light that moves through each chakra and removes any emotional debris. And the process of removing it can be scary, very scary sometimes, if you're not supported or feel safe. So I say um, to honor your body first and to always start from your heart to listen to... Uh, a partner to know that whatever comes up is perfect. You don't have to be right. You just be present. Because sometimes if we're seeking pleasure, we have to come across some moments of shadow or sadness. And if we try to avoid or deny that, then we're putting a lot of energy and pushing back what's trying to come up. But if we're able to find a safe way to express our needs and our desires to one another or come to workshops where we practice these things and learn how to communicate vulnerable emotions and feelings. Um, that gives us the tools to, to start going to those places that we've hidden for a long time. And then that opens up more channels for more freedom of energy. And the more we do it, the more easy and the more exciting it becomes. But the first few times, especially if we've been violated or traumatized, the first yeah. few times need sometimes some handholding and coaching to know that there is life on the other side, that there's light on the other side, that there's uh, something really wonderful and yummy on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, those... Yeah. Uh, those, and I guess probably virtually everybody mm -hmm. violated, you know, at some point, everybody has a traumatic or a series mm -hmm. of traumatic, uh, and those things are like the, the deepest, deepest of the deepest, you know, and those things to clear, I mean, that's a, that is a, uh, like the root of the whole journey. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like the... Right clear that out. And, and, and I think that's, I'm not saying I'm anywhere, but I'm, I'm saying that I've seen all the chakras in my relationship with Morgan be checked and cleared and checked and cleared. And then, and as, as I got to the, to the sacral in the root and then mm -hmm. began to actually communicate with my physical body at the same time, 
it was extraordinary the level of uh, healing and, and DNA refinement, alignment, whatever you want to call it, that can happen yeah. through an honest, uh, sacred, sexual openness and willingness to surrender everything you thought you were and willingness to accept whatever the hell's coming. You have no idea. <laughs> <What's the matter? laughs> like, Trusting well, the great I'm unknown. Gonna, yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, am I ever going to have normal sex again? Am I ever even going to have sex again? Am I ever going to be able to have sex again? And mm -hmm. and then I had to get to this point, and I was like, you know what? You know what? Mm -hmm. that, how stupid is that? I'm divinity. You know, I'm divinity. So yeah. is that going to, is that like anything else? Is that going to uh, uh, lower my impression of myself or, you know, uh, falsely uh, improve my self-perception, you know? Uh, no. I am what I am, and uh, and when you when you surrender, and this is the perfect and the soulgasmic example. When you surrender, it comes back to you. Whoa, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I'm right. looking forward right. to. And then it loops around and around, and each time it does, it gets bigger and stronger. Yeah, and more more love gathers. Yeah. Our connection happens. Yeah, love is magical and beautiful, and sexual, sacred love is really something that we're just on the brink of really fully discovering. Yes. But we have great, tremendous power that we can Im imbibe each other in, we can give to each other to help us live longer and stronger and have more illuminated thoughts and radiant, all of us <laughs> radiant throughout our whole body yeah we can rejuvenate okay. every organ there are actual yeah. positions that can rejuvenate different organs in your body when you're practicing sexual uh, practices say, for purposes of rejuvenation i might ever need them <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can i can I, I I I, <laughs> no i'm just uh, i'm i have full confidence in my uh my relationship with infinite intelligence that will guide me and yeah i mean you know i mean can you imagine seeing sacred geometry and light language on your lover's back and it's moving around all right it's like doing this and i'm like i don't know what it's saying but i know i'm learning i know i'm getting it it was just and that was just one part of it i mean what are we getting into here what is what is going to happen to all of us? I mean, I know at some level it will be an integration of what we uh, of what it looks like, the positions, for instance, intercourse, whatever you want to call it, and the heart equally. But that's not all of it. It's not going to be that way every time. There's not going to be a happy ending every time. It's not even going to look like anything. So what are we getting into? Are we going to like you know, have wings sprout up, out of us and we're going to fly up to <laughs> the cosmos and have a mutual uh, teleportation or what? Yes, I think so. There will be dimensions where we do sprout wings. What I think really is occurring is that we're accessing other realms of the sexual rejuvenation power that are multidimensional and geometric and the yeah. geometrics are like portals that enable us to enter into that chakra that channel each chakra has a yantra which is a, a geometric shape that holds the vibrational field of that chakra and so when you're seeing these dimensions of, of, make, of sacred geometry I see it too I know what you're talking about and it's very sexy to me the you know, it's like I you're mean, entering into a person's energy field and, and that that is very rich i know and to me it was like you know the the message i got and someone actually mm -hmm. sent me this message which was kind of freaky mm -hmm. uh, a lady and i was like it was okay if i have to put it in like human terms god was giving god was she was directly linked to to source source was sending me a message through this person who is my divine conscious partner right so it was almost like the love sure. uh, created this channel right. the information came in and then it actually i don't know if it was physical or not you know i don't know if the, no it was with my two eyes so it was a physical you know 
with one of the senses, right? I didn't feel it like as as being raised, but but it, but I definitely saw it, and I saw a lot of other stuff. Okay, a lot of stuff, and uh, you're also yeah. seeing with this eye too. Remember, your yeah. Ajna Third Eye yeah. Center is opening to see inner realms. Yeah. There are oh, multi that's, dimensions that's, that's, that coexist. Yeah. It was in a room, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, I, I feel tantric quantum sex is another variation of perception and that when we're making love and our ego falls away and our shadows and fears are no longer haunting us, we enter into a realm that is a blessed state. And in this place, we see visions and we get guided and we don't think we're just following this field that opens up and surrounds us and guides us to just, you know, be filled, to drink it up, <laughs> to really become like filled up with that vibration so that it isn't just in the time that we're making love that we're feeling that field, but it stays with us for days. Yeah. It's that kind of yeah. afterglow that yeah you know uh, yeah that's yeah god what you just said i mean um you know to be able to to actually hear this discuss even if it wasn't on the show i think is fantastic because <laughs> uh you know it's it's such a an it's such a uh it's a it's like a, a state of that, that can last i guess is what i'm saying like you yes. can actually, take it, you can take it with you, you know? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah that kind of afterglow that stays you know with I mean? you, lights yeah, you stay, up and stays with you. Like, yeah, like I'm telling you, I, I talked to her on the phone last night <laughs> as an example. <laughs> and I was just thinking about her. And I was <laughs> thinking this and I'm thinking that. And it's not like the, what you were talking about at the top show, not that old stuff, the routine that it, it, it was, but it was like, it was like sensitive it was like kind of like sacred. It looked really fucking sexy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. about it. And mm -hmm. it was, but it was the energy, you know, it was the energy, not the vision. The vision like connected to it and then it just started happening, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how powerful our minds are. That yeah. we can open up to that, that state of thought. I bet everyone here, who's listening could tap into that state just by focusing on the most vulnerable, beautiful experience you felt before and just remember that feeling and allow yourself to feel it back in your body where you felt it. And we can recreate those kinds of experiences or go back into that zone and then we're there again for mm. the next new present experience of intimacy and vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful when you have that quality of love that you're expressing and experiencing that you just feel that with each other. I honor you. <laughs> I honor you. Thank you. For and your connection. Mm. And then you know, the crazy thing is, is uh, I had to reschedule this, this lady in Sedona and I'm looking at the two shows today, which I usually have like four, but I had a couple cancel and, uh, and she's, she does she's going to be talking about the same thing so i don't know if it's a world <laughs> second day or what <laughs> <laughs> well that's exciting that's interesting i love that people are awakening awakening to sexual power and sexual truth and sexual richness and the wisdom that it can leave us with that that kind of afterglow that makes us feel connected to source and powerful and you know ready to take on whatever the world occupies and brings us to so it's it's it is from what you understand you've already kind of stated it, i just want to re restate it reaffirm it it's it is a multi-dimensional experience it 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 can put you in other dimensions alone or together i mean i'm just kind of summing it up and, and you can add to it whatever or, or take away uh it's uh it's direct uh communication in, in a very unique way uh, to infinite intelligence. It's, mm -hmm. it's instruction. It's God, it's like, it's like opening up, uh, you know, the Akashic records and the, in the full potentiality of uh, 
no time and space. Right. And because the reason it's like this is an ongoing state is that because we open that chakra and allow the energy to be flowing rather than contracted like most people have been controlled and you and I have been, when our chakras are flowing and there's not that feeling of shame and harboring, there's just so much more energy that flows through every chakra and every part of our body becomes so much more um, activated and so much more um, energy flowing and so much more sen sensitivity. Because when we live in pleasure, we're much more sensitive to each other. We're not guarded. We're present mm -hmm. to feeling, yeah. exchanging, and giving, receiving that dance of pleasure, even if it's the postman or the you know, person down the street. You know, we're just engaging in positivity and putting out that, pumping out that pleasure <laughs> throughout the planet. <laughs> And that's good. That's good. But we need that. You know, just keep pumping out pleasure because the more turned on we are and the more turned on we put into our art and our creativity yeah. and our business, yeah. which is another form of creativity. It's an expression of who we are and why we're here. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, it's not just about sexuality and what we do behind closed doors with our eyes closed in the bedroom or with our eyes open as we're starting to awaken. But it's how that energy, when it's unleashed, can make us a more whole, conscious, positive, present person yeah. without blocks in our life, without energy blocks. You know, even tantric massage and anal massage hold, help open places where we hold tensions and fears, sometimes that are, you know, ages old, decades old. And then suddenly more energy is flowing and more abundance is flowing and more magnetic, positive pleasure and creativity starts flowing. Yeah. So, yeah, I encourage people to learn how to touch each other with that quality of putting love in to replace the negativity and letting that love clear and re um, neck the circuits, the chakras above and below chakra so that everything is back in balance again sometimes just holding hands above and below a chakra that's been charged or wounded can really help to rejuvenate that chakra and bring it back into harmony until it's able to be touched again and connected again because i know so many people have sexual wounds and i just want to say to them that you know that's part of your journey. It's part of my journey. And I'm grateful that I've been wounded because it's taught me how to heal. And it's taught me how to heal others. And it's taught me how the world wounds one another and that it's an epidemic that's yeah. worldwide. <laughs> that, you know, we all have had some variation of blockage from to make us less conscious. Yeah, but yeah. now it's time to awaken and become fully engaged and have every chakra spinning and every part of us connected and open and flowing and communicating with each other. That's so right. that, yeah, we're getting all the information that we need to move into a more powerful reality together. So yeah. it's exciting to me. Sacred sexuality is just like beyond sex. It's living with our hearts and our bodies wide open and our yeah. sexual centers too. But not necessarily yeah. nakedly, physically, but energetically. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but I mean, if you're if your sexual centers are uh, open and, and and a clear channel, and you're walking yeah. around, you know, where it doesn't matter what you're doing, you've you've got this little you've got this little lift with you. You know, everybody's felt it. Everybody's <laughs> felt sexy. Right. Everybody's felt sexy about themselves. Right. You know, and it's not a very right. sexual situation either. I'm talking about. You know, when you when you yeah, you could be in spring in their step, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? spring in your step. Happy you spring, could be like, springtime. Yeah, <laughs> you could be you could be a seventh grade boy who's struggling with adolescence, and and you're walking through the hallway, and you just happen to have a nice shirt on that day from Christmas, and you look crisp, and your hair's nice, and three chicks say, "Hey, you look nice today," and then boom, it's it. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> everyone's experienced it, so. uh that's a good way, I think, in a conscious, physical way to know where you're at. Do you have that spring? You know, mm -hmm. are you feeling that? And, and how, like you were saying earlier, how do I get that going in this 
you know, in my biochemistry? How do I get that flowing? And like you were saying, go, you know, you can go back to uh, this, you know, intimate episode or this occurrence or that experience and, and, and uh, what kind of like ground in that feeling again, right? Use it as a springboard to remember what it feels like to be open and to to feel and receive <clears throat> remembering the deepest levels of intimacy that we felt can sometimes help us kind of step back into that place it's a little bit like self-hypnosis that we oh. use that image to remind us of how vulnerable or how orgasmic or how loved feels so that we can retract that feeling and then go from there into what's present and So Our feelings can be such great teachers for us. Yes. Our feelings, you know, if we know and can trust and feel safe enough to express those feelings, they can unravel. And I just want to give people permission to know that that's sometimes on the other side of pain is the most exquisite pleasure. Sometimes on the other side of tears is the most ecstatic communion. And... Uh, so, and then that's very true in sex too. And the most ecstatic orgasms can happen from just really feeling vulnerable. I'll tell you a quick story. I was feeling unloved and unlovable because my partner would go to sleep early at night and um, we weren't having as much sex as I wanted. And so he came before he came home one night, I was telling myself I'm not lovable. And um, when he came home, I shared that with him. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling lovable to you. I'm not feeling that you want me anymore. Oh, I remember he was taking a nap. And when he woke up is when I told him, oh, I don't feel like you love me anymore. And then he kissed my face with such tenderness. And it was like the little girl, that little fearful part of me was being kissed in that moment. Yeah. And it just transformed into the most magical lovemaking that went on for the rest of the night. <laughs> Just yeah. because we had this deep, intimate moment where I shared my fear and he kissed it. Yeah. Yeah. Tenderly. Yeah. Wow. It's it's very wow. sweet how we can communicate to our soul with touch, with kiss, with intimacy on all levels and all chakras. And the best part of that story is the, the first part. The, the mm -hmm. kiss. No words, mm -hmm. just the kiss and everything turned. So yeah. do you do do you do <laughs> more online? Do you do it in person only or, do, or both? I definitely do both. I definitely do both. And I'm creating a course for men and women called Coming Together, Body, Mind, and Soul mm. to do an online course as well as in person in L.A. for those who are here in L.A. Very cool. So how, yeah. do, people, how do people find you? Um, I don't know if I put the – let me see if I put the uh, – my Facebook link is Mayor Simone in Tantra Heaven. Okay. My Facebook friend page is already full, and unfortunately, but I have a good fan page. And I'm, my website is MayorSimone.com. Let me find uh, Mayor Simone. What was the, no, the first one? Mayor Simone in Tantra Heaven. In? In Tantra Heaven. <laughs> good place to live and I'll put it in the uh, I don't see it mm. I'll find it that's a mm. page right yeah that's my fan page page mm. Mm. okay so you're uh, and then your web page is Simone it's my name Mayor Simone Mayor Mayor Simone. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah All right. And I have a YouTube channel and putting together a podcast soon. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Are you going to do it on yeah. YouTube? You're going to do it on YouTube? I want to, I'm not, I want to do something on sacred sexual healing and I want to find an outlet, a portal that is least, that has the least amount of filters to sexuality. Well, so uh, <laughs> I have some research to, to do. Talk to us in 30 days and uh, I think we're uh -huh. going to be in. Okay. Oh, you do. You're getting off of Facebook and doing something else. Is that right? Yeah. You're creating your own channel. Yeah. yeah. So that that's yeah. and that's part of the reason. So there's no censorship at all. You know, and that's wide important. open, truth, authentic, that's... raw, real, everybody. You know, and we just and it's a community thing. So, so yeah. I think that's yeah. I think it's yeah, I'm just. 
it's time for that for sure. I'm just amazed at how many of my posts get banned from Facebook ads because it relates to sexuality or pleasure or orgasms. <laughs> for God forbid. I think they're going to give it <laughs> We don't need to worry about that. We we're just focused we're just focused yeah. on building a new a new energetic pathway. Mm. Take our focus off of that. But but I do Thank think you. that that, that. I, I was gonna say let's collaborate again because you really we just discussed some general and had some fun and that type of thing, but there's a lot of uh, intricacies and specifics and uh, mm -hmm. process modalities and information like that you'll have in your course and on yeah. your podcast, which we hope to support you on that. Thank so you. we could collaborate again. I'll reach out and we're going to reach out, uh, you know, as we get into this next month and see what we can set up. It's going to be okay. a big month, a busy month. But so I just what about all these what about all these comments here? Is there a way we can respond to them after? It sounds like we're wrapping up the call now, and I respect yeah, yeah. that because we've been on for a while. <laughs> one hour. I usually try to stay on one hour. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so well, you do, what most people do if they're engaged, which, you know, that's the nice word I'll use, <laughs> is, is they'll go to the comments and just work through the comments if they've been mm -hmm. a guest. Because people want to know you. They want to know yeah. where you're at. I would recommend that you put the put the links to anything that you anywhere they can find you in the comments, and then mm -hmm. just go down the comments and just and just because they're they've got questions directed at you or whatever you want to. So do. this will be live, and where will this be? It's on my Facebook. It's on my it's oh, on it my is. Facebook page. Uh, you can put it on your Facebook page. It's going to be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube in probably eight or ten hours. Uh, it's all you on studios. So, uh, and if you have trouble finding it, you know, just hit, hit up, uh, hit me up, uh, but you'll see it. It's on my page. And it's okay, on good. Thanks. I didn't know that. Yeah. Appreciate it. So we, we will, yeah. uh, everybody seem to like it. Yeah. And uh, we'll collaborate <laughs> again and see if we can't support you to have a podcast in, in this. Mm. Mm, thank you very much. Well, I'm delighted. It was so exciting to meet you, Todd. Thank nice you for being. Thank we'll you for inviting.